everybody, welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings the Card Game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. And I'm Ted Bannock, and I love talking about cards. <laughs> you guys always crack me up with that stuff. Uh, and today, I am super excited to bring to our um, our audience a behind-the-scenes guy at Cardboard of the Rings, and... One of the organizers of Con of the Rings, this guy has been around the community for a while, I would guess. We'll talk more about it when we uh, when we introduce him, but um, or when we talk to him for real. But I'd like to welcome Aaron Fishbaugh to the show. Aaron, welcome. Well, thank you for having me, and thank you for correctly getting uh, both my first and my last name. Uh, you <laughs> pronounce them both correctly. That's rare. Right. <laughs> Right. Um, I well, I thought I think even when we were talking off air before this, I was going to say that I was going to introduce you as Eric Fishbaugh, but then I just decided that that wasn't um, the way that it needed to be. I figured that you know at least one of the podcasts need to recognize you for who you really are, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's nice to get my name to get my hear, hear my name pronounced correctly. <laughs> right. right. Uh, just so the audience knows, um, Aaron has been involved with uh, cardboard of the rings for a while but it seems like anytime he comes on air um chad specifically gets his name wrong a lot so um or just forgets it or you know and it's not because it, in all honesty in an honest moment it's not because chad doesn't know you or doesn't know you well enough to do that it just seems like he ends up screwing up your name right screws up my name forgets that i'm actually on the episode <laughs> um he's done he's done quite a few uh things like that over the over the last couple of years <laughs> But you know what? We love you, Chad. We'll catch you on the next one. Okay. <laughs> um, but Aaron, this show is about you, so let's uh, get into it. Uh, tell tell the audience a little bit about you, how you're involved in the community, what you do, you know, which, where, where do you live, um, specifically your address so we can find out. Hunchy... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you were at Con of the Rings, and you... I was. you weren't aware about 10 percent of con of the rings was staying at my house so quite a lot of people know my address right right i've completely doxed myself to the community so right right uh no but uh, i'm aaron fishbaugh um i am living in minneapolis now um been here for a couple of years uh dave as you mentioned um been a part of the lord of the rings community i think i've been playing the game since i want to say it was early in 2014 I know the ring maker cycle was going on when I got a, when I got a copy of the core set. That was like um, me. I, uh, I, I bought my first core set April, 2014. And so I was probably right around then, maybe a little bit later. Okay. Um, and then, uh, played it just a little bit over 2014, actually the fall of 2014. Uh, I got married and my wife and I planned our own wedding and threw everything ourselves. Oh. So you know, we were pretty busy in the lead up to that. Yeah. Yep. Um, got really into it after there, um, got involved, you know, big fan of the, the cardboard of the rings podcast. And actually I think it was going into Gen Con 2017. I had planned to. Uh, attend and then offer my services to edit the podcast when Brandon and Sean and Brian were still the hosts. And then, you know, they announced that they were retiring from the podcast. And so I just offered my services as an editor to uh, Chad and Chris. And then I've been part of uh, the show, uh, I guess, since since about Gen Con 2017. <laughs> wow. So so you've been so you've been really an active part of the community for a, a long time here, right? Like are you are you active much on the on the social side, social media, that sort of stuff or very much on the Carpet of the Rings Discord. I'm uh, mm -hmm. I'm on there pretty much every every single day. Mostly I'm in the non Lord of the Rings the game channels. Uh, it seems to be where I end up doing <laughs> more of my posting, but I'm definitely a very active member of the community there. Um, and actually it's really the reason, even if I didn't love the game as much as I did, or as I do, I imagine I'd still be an active member of the community because, you know, it is, you know, we say it all the time, everybody who's a part of it, I think kind of echoes that same sentiment, which is, it is a really amazing community. And we were talking off air about, you know, the, the level of Patreon support that we, you know, whether it's Cardboard of the Rings, whether it's your guys' podcast, um, people are really supportive and, uh, you know, it, it, it's a great community to be a part of. Yes. And Aaron, thank you for the reminder. I just wanted to say in a little little 
break here, almost commercial like, that um, since Con of the Rings happened, we had a, um, a pretty big influx for our show of new patrons, and I wanted to make sure that I went down and thanked not only the three ongoing patrons that we've had, both uh, Phil, Dominic, and Joseph, but the six new ones that we've had. We had Justin, Lou, Rob, Robert, Sean, um, and David join the um, uh, the the ranks. So, to all the patrons out there, thank you so much for your um, either new or continued support. And and Aaron, you know, you know, as a creator yourself, how important those patrons can be. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 it's great to know that there, you know, especially when you put your own creative energy into something, um, to know that there are people out there who appreciate it right. and are, uh, you know, taking it in and enjoying what you do is, is really cool, even without any of the, the, the funds or the support. But I mean, right. there is a little bit of cost involved in anything you do beyond your time. So right. you can recoup that from uh, the fans of the product that's right. even better. They like us. They really like us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Must be our uh, dashing good looks, I guess, that reeled them in. Well, let me let me pull up a picture <laughs> of you if you were talking about dashing good looks. And so... <laughs> <laughs> because I... <laughs> People are dashing when they see me, but they don't. That's not because of my good looks. That's for <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> so, Aaron, what brought you to the game? I mean, a lot of people um, started this game because they're gamers. Some people thought that they would really love the the source material. Other people, you know, were Magic fans. I don't know. So, what brought you into the game? Um, well, this is actually, I guess, it's the first card game I've really played. I mean, I, I think. When Magic first came out, I want to say that was like 91 or 92, something like that. Um, a couple of my friends got into it. I played one or two games. wasn't really for me. <laughs> Never had any idea there was any such thing as a hobby, board gaming. Uh, that world was something I wasn't even aware of until probably sometime in 2013 or so. Um, had a friend who got, you know, got me into playing a couple of hobby board games, got interested. And then actually, uh, I, I fell into Lord of the Rings, the card game. My wife was getting LASIK eye surgery, and uh, I dropped her off to get LASIK. I had like two hours to kill while she was in the procedure room. And so I went to a board game store, saw Lord of the Rings, the card game, saw you could play it solo, picked it up. And because uh, I am a big fan of Lord of the Rings, you know, okay. the books I, I read a lot as a kid. And then the movies came out, you know, I was in 1920, however old they were. And uh, <laughs> really lo loved the movies as well, you know, kind of got me back into the into the books and the lore. And so I figured, oh, it's kind of right up my alley, something I could play on my own and something that's a theme that I have an interest in. And um, yeah, I've, I've been, been loving it ever since. That's that's awesome. You know, and that's that's the thing about me is that um, I came in because of the because of the solo aspect and the theme. The theme of the game is amazing, and then the fact that it's just an awesome game also just makes it um, that much better. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm not much of a uh, I'm not much of a video gamer. You know, as I've as I've aged, my ability to or interest in playing games for more than a, a small amount of time video games um just really isn't there anymore and you know i spent and especially back when i got into this game i was working 10 12 hours a day in front of a little laptop screen and all i did all day long was stare at a screen so kind of the last thing i wanted to do when i came home was stare at screens more right so uh, that sounds you know, like electron john on, on uh, cardboard of the rings you know like he doesn't play octgn very often because he just doesn't want to sit in front of the screen yeah, I mean, absolutely. When I play, uh, when I play Lord of the Rings myself, I'm almost always just playing with the physical cards. Um, if I'm playing solo, absolutely, uh, I'll play with the physical cards. It's just a, a chance to give my eyes a little rest from from screen time, and right. you know, it's one of the reasons I was interested in in board games, and especially when I found out you could solo some board games. Um, just right. it's it's some other way to spend your effort, feel a little bit more engaged than I do watching TV or uh, you know other kind of more passive like activities. So yeah. the game was perfect fit for my where I was at at that time in my life, and because it is such a great game, and I do love the theme and the community, um, it's stayed a really like really right. important part of my life for the last I guess almost five years now. Yeah, and how much how much of the game do you own? Everything and about half of the nightmare packs okay so you're uh you're a completist completionist um 
I am not a completionist in most of my life, but in this game, uh, all the cards available, <laughs> yes. I don't have any interest in like tracking down the play mats and stuff like that. I don't have, I don't really care about that, but right. um, I do have everything that, uh, you know, eventually I'll, I'll get caught up on the nightmare packs and I will have every <laughs> every card component <laughs> to the game. Yeah, that's, uh, so, oh, you're going to get the alt art Gimli at some point? No, I don't have alt art Gimli. <sighs> And alt art Boromir. I think are the only two I don't have. Yeah, that's <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the club. Um, <clears throat> let me ask you a little bit about Con of the Rings. I just want everybody to see. Absolutely, you know, right here I am. And this was purely by accident. This shirt is so comfortable that I just happened to put it on for my Sunday night football watching thing, you know, but it's got my little name here. So this is a great shirt. But um, how did you get involved? I've heard the kind of the, the origin story from uh, Peace and Thought from John's point of view. But um, what's what's your what's your side of it? Um, well, I, you know, we, I had a chance to meet John and Mark and Ben, the other three guys who were part of the planning team for Con of the Rings. We all, you know, we'd all interacted via Discord um, for probably a couple of years, but then um, had a chance to meet in person at the Cardboard of the Rings after dark event at Gen Con uh, two years ago, where John and Mark kind of pitched this idea of hosting a, a convention in the fall in Minneapolis. And I was new to living in Minneapolis, and I really wanted to, to get more involved in the local community here. So I volunteered my services. Um, I am far and away the least important member of the planning team. Uh, I have the least amount of responsibility, and that's a good thing, and that's by design. Um, but I, I, you know, it was, it was a really great opportunity to get more actively involved in the local scene, get a chance to play with the physical cards with other people a lot more as well, because there are some local events here in the Twin Cities, but it's the same handful of folks. Right. And every time, you know, I've had a chance to go to Gen Con, it's just a blast to meet larger groups of people. You get chances to play three or four player games, uh, you know, play with some different decks that, you know, if you're mostly a solo player like I am, you never get a chance to break out the, the janky decks when you're trying to get through a quest on your own right so uh the conventions are a great way to do that and just another excuse to hang out with a lot of my uh, internet friends right in person which is a rare you know opportunity to take advantage of it when you can yeah and um just one other reason to make people jealous and want to come to con of the rings 2020 is this little guy and this little guy, if this if the swag, if that swag is going to stay as awesome as this is, then um, it's worth it just for the for the awesome swag. Um, complete full wooden deck boxes. There's not an ounce of metal on it, so that so the hinge works. You know, just it's it's uh, it's it's all you know. It's just all cut. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. What you guys did this year was um, phenomenal. Yeah, they came out even better than we had expected. They look even better than the <laughs> prototype designs that we were sent when we first started thinking about it as an option. So it's really, uh, it, we're, we were very, very happy and we were glad to see that everybody at the con seemed to really like them as well. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of your favorites in the game. Are you up for this little game? Sure. <laughs> Do you have a favorite quest? Um, oh man, favorite quest. You know, I think my favorite quest, and I'm not going to remember the name of it, but it's the Jungle Book quest from the Harad cycle. The Muma Kill. The Muma Kill. Yes. yes, I love that one. <laughs> where you have to put the where you have to put the Muma Kill in the trap and you lasso it, or you could with the horsehair lasso, right? Isn't that one? Yeah, you've got you've got that. You've got uh, you've got King Luby as a card. Yes. You've got a Shere Khan as Shere a card. Khan, right? you've got and Ka. Ka. I mean, right? Yep. <laughs> it's fantastic. You know, I love you know Jungle Book. I am also a big fan of pretty much all the Disney movies. So that quest is one that I just, as soon as I saw the cards in it, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to love this one. And, you know, mechanically it's a fun quest, but I, I just kind of get a smile on my face every time I play <laughs> that one. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, you're not a fan of Across the Entenmores, are you? No, that's not one of my absolute favorites. Do you know why I ask about Across the Entenmores? No, why? 
Oh well, I do know why now. Yeah. Oh 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 oh. <laughs> do you see? I, I'm from a wor- player card perspective. I love that pack. Oh 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 oh. So just to remind everybody, what we do on Card Talk is we like to we like to just be pleasant enough to to reel in our guests here. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but um, no. But uh, Across the Enten Wars was a it was a pack released a while ago, and um, Aaron, what? Why do I bring up Across the Enten Wars? Well, I think if I'm known for anything in the community beyond, you know, my name being uh, you know, forgotten by the host of Cardboard of the Rings or for helping host uh, and put on Con of the Rings, it would be that I'm always out there banging the drum for my favorite hero in the game. And that is uh, that's Dory. That is Dory. So um, why don't we spend some time talking about Dory? And for the audience, I would love to. I'm sure you would. It's almost like we I had this lo- planned. <laughs> oh ted you were gonna say something yeah i'd say i'd, I'd love to as, as well I'm, I'm quite excited to uh get some input on this hero yeah ted loves talking about cards he doesn't really love I... talking about people but he loves talking about Lo- cards. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, aaron why don't you uh read the card and tell us what it does and talk about it a little bit Absolutely. So Dory is a tactics hero. He's got a threat cost of 10, one willpower, two attack, two defense, five hit points. He is the trait dwarf. It's his only trait, and I will come back to that a little bit later. (laughs) Uh, He also is sentinel, and he has a response after another hero is declared as a defender. Exhaust Dory to add his defense to the defending hero's defense for this attack. Okay, well, Aaron, you have the show for for a minute. Why don't you uh, talk to us and tell us why you um, beat the drum for this guy? Well, there are many things that I, I, I love about Dory. I would say Dory is less about what he can do or is and more about what he doesn't do and is not, if that makes <laughs> any sense. <laughs> <laughs> you just summed up Hero Dory. That's, that's what Bright <laughs> He is he is confounding. He is um an enigma in a lot of ways as a card. Um Well his flavor text says he's a really decent fellow. He is a decent fellow, in spite of all of his grumbling. Um so if I remember correctly from the Hobbit, I think Dory is the dwarf who when they're in the, the tunnels under the Misty Mountains drops Bilbo when they lose him and everyone, all the other dwarves get mad at Dory for dropping Bilbo and losing their burglar. I think that's, that's who he is. Uh, Grant, do you have, uh, is that uh, confirmed? I believe so. It's been a while since I've read the Hobbit, but it seems about right. Okay. And I know we're not here to talk about um, ally Dory, but ally Dory's art, if I'm not mistaken, which I like to also call a, uh, Dutch Master Dory, because it looks as if like Rembrandt or Rubens painted his card art. Right, right, um, right, right. But I think you can actually see, I think he's carrying Bilbo over his shoulder. So uh, okay. I like everything about Dory. I thought you were going to say early, but... Dutch oven Dory. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's no not what you're... On that. Yeah, okay. Okay, so Dutch, Dutch Master's Dory. Okay. Uh, no, but but, the... Go ahead. I never noticed that in his art before. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm looking up the ally version right now. I did not realize that that is what's going on in that picture. And I've handled that card many times. Why? Why are you handling ally Dory? <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll do an episode on him. But he had a place in the game, I think, more when he Earlier was initially on. launched. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. he got a, he got some play time then. But yeah, sticking to his hero version. Okay. <laughs> Now you see why Ted's on the shows because he keeps us he keeps us on the straight and narrow. So, um, so what do, what do you think of Dory? Aaron, you had your chance. Now now it's time to give it over to the guys real quick. Um, Grant, what do you think of Hero Dory? Just right off the rip here. Right off the rip, I'm actually imp- I like his ability. The ability to just um, add. His extra defense to another character, well, another hero for the defense, can be crucial. I've had it um, when me and Sam were playing. When their videos actually get released, you'll see that 
story actually comes into his own and goes for his ability more than his own defending right. or his own attacking. He's a good hero, but he needs to be paired with paired with somebody else. Right. What about you, Ted? What's your what's your first take on him? Yeah, uh, he's certainly he's he's quite unique. I mean, his ability, I would say, is like no other ability that I can think of where he does some type of uh, at least for a hero where you do some type of like stat boosting to to another character. And he he is a Sentinel defender, um, which there's not, you know, there's a decent handful in the game, but there's not that many. Um, so he's got a lot of applications, I think, in multiplayer, I think is where he's going to see the most yeah. play or maybe possible like scenario specific. I think he might be that card you kind of reach for to use his ability specifically to defend against big attacks. Yeah. And. I will look at this card, and when I see him, I'm thinking, okay, so he's a tactics dwarf. And that's really where I start. And I'm like, okay, who are the tactics dwarfs? There's only three tactics dwarf heroes, and that's Thalon and Gimli. And then Dory is the other one. And, you know, and I don't know about Thorin Thalon. To be, to, to be released. Right, Thorin Stonehelm. Uh, right, yeah. Thorin Stonehelm is good. But, you know, I, I'm not... So have a tactics dwarf may be the the thing that another option for a tactics dwarf right like so now you can run a solo tactics dwarf deck if you wanted to i don't know if you'd want to but <laughs> <laughs> but so aaron how do you use dory like you're the you're the expert here right well so here's the thing with with, with the dory that I, I find him interesting so the main reason i was drawn to him is i am not by any means like i said this is my first card game so i'm not <laughs> well versed in in deck building mm -hmm. sure. but i am very interested in uh jankery and coming up with a, a very specific idea and executing it even if it really doesn't help anybody else if it if i think it's fun i'm going to want to sure. try it out and right? that's the beauty of this game you know going back to why people get involved you know like we're it's a solo game you can do it for fun for yourself but because it's a cooperative game people have fun with it more than they're competing with each other so yeah absolutely and i think when i first tried to build anything with dory i think one of the reasons i did it was i went on a hall of bayorn and he was either the least liked hero or maybe the second least liked hero. Yeah. Um, Lord Bilbo's he's got to not be included him. in very many uh, decks on Rings DB that aren't what appear to be dwarf fellowships. Right. So he's just not, he doesn't get a lot of use. So I thought, hmm, well, let's go ahead and start building out the Dory deck. And the more I tried to build the Dory deck, the more I realized, huh, he really, he, I can't quite get him to do. <laughs> all that much because his his ability is interesting but it's very situational and i think if you go back and read like the teaser article for across the Antmores, i think they define dory as about being flexible right so his response is great as a flexible response if you need to possibly use it it's there for you otherwise he's a sentinel defender however of course, you can't really use his sentinel defense if you want to trigger his response because <laughs> he's exhausted and vice versa. So he almost works against his own ability a little bit. You need to figure out ways to ready him, which, again, is not exactly super simple to do within tactics, right? Right. You're going to have to pair him with leadership or spirit, usually. Yeah, absolutely. So like cram and things like that. So. So when I started thinking through, okay, well, what can I do with Dory? You know, he's got a lot of hit points to start right. off. That and, was going to uh, be my question to you anyways. What can you do with Dory, right? <laughs> well, I don't know all of what you can, but I can tell you what I have done. With okay, Dory. well, that's good. That's, all right. that's, that's, a good, that's so, better than what I've already done with Dory. <laughs> I think I used Dory for the first time when I built a deck for, uh, I was doing a Twitch stream with uh, Daniel uh, or Big Foam Loaf. And we had decided just to put together gimmicky decks and see how they would play. And so I thought, well, what if I just threw every Sentinel card I could think of into a deck? Would it be any good? Um, <laughs> could we even beat, you know, 
journey with a, a deck that's just right. sentinel versus whatever garbage that uh that daniel was going to bring along <laughs> and uh we didn't really do much of anything it wasn't a very good deck but i was thinking hmm there's a lot of ways to pad dory's hit points right. and we've got song of mocking so if dory can't be out there doing a lot he can at least in a multiplayer game maybe just soak up a whole bunch of extra damage for people right so what I've ended up doing with Dory is <laughs> the current iteration of the Dory deck is incredible amounts of jank. So I'll walk you through <laughs> uh, the version that I played a couple of times at Con of the Rings. Um, so the hero lineup is Baravor, okay. Baragond, and Dory. Okay. So, so Baravor is there. Baravor's lore, right? Lore Baravor, uh, Tactics yeah. Baragond. Right. And then, so and it's, it's a lore tactics deck, okay? It's a lore tactics deck. So Barivor is there, one for card draw, sure, and two to give me access to more card draw and healing. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, okay. So in terms of helping out the team, I don't like to actually quest because that means I can't Barivor myself, which is the whole point of having Barivor on the table. Right. So it's already kind of a selfish deck, but it tries to make up for it with one. You know, it's got Hero Baragond. Right. Uh, I use, and this is where the jankery really starts. <laughs> I so, love, really love it so far how the redeeming quality is like not Dory himself, but like another hero. Right. The redeeming quality. <laughs> we'll get to Dory. <laughs> right. Yeah. All the other jank has to happen before Dory really can shine. Okay. So the whole idea of, you know, Tactics Baragon, clearly, right, you know, great, probably maybe the best Sentinel defender in the game. All you have to do is get one Gondorian shield out and you're kind of set. Um, but I don't want the deck to just be a Baragon deck and also Dory's hanging around. So what I do is I leverage the fact that I have access to lore to get out the Long Lake Trader, who I then play item attachments on Baragon for a discount and Long Lake Trader them over to Dory. So I get a little resource acceleration <laughs> for all of my attachments, like Citadel Plate, uh, well, Citadel Plate's the biggest one that I want to get out right. to get more hit points on Dory mm -hmm. and then use my card draw to get out Song of Mocking so that I can start to take all the damage on the table, stick it over onto Dory, heal him up with whatever healing I can draw into, whether that's Warden, whether that's Eorith. And that's then having Dory's situational ability, use that as necessary, use his Sentinel Defense if necessary. Otherwise, he's just there soaking up damage and healing it up. And I do realize that any hero could do the same thing, but then you wouldn't get a chance to play with Dory. Right. So I was, let's, so, so you're trying to soak up uh, damage from other attacks using Dory, your long lake tratering items in from Baragond uh, um, over to Dory. And uh, I guess they can go all the way around the board, right? Which is kind of a good, um, true. That that's a good technique in multiplayer anyways. Right. So. Absolutely. So if I, you know, a great example of, of what will happen is, you know, one of the goals is let's get out some Citadel plates, right? They're only going to end up costing two on Baragond. I can long leg trade them over to Dory, but maybe earlier I had drawn into uh, ring mail, right? That's a good example. It's an extra right. hit point, an extra defense, and it goes on a dwarf or a hobbit character. Well, mm -hmm. I could also long leg trader that ring mail on to another character on the board when I'm running out of restricted slots, uh, beef up my hit points. I think, what, two citadel plates and five hit points. Now, all of a sudden, you know, Dory's up there at, at nine. Hit, uh, he's at, what, 13 hit points? 13 hit points, yeah. Plus Song of Mocking, he's out there soaking up all kinds of damage. So that's the idea behind the deck. It is by no means a powerful deck or even, I would say, much of a good deck. But it's kind of a fun, janky deck to play against an easy quest. And I enjoy playing it, which to well, me, more, totally than building, <laughs> more than building powerful decks or winning, I just, just... <laughs> like to have fun. And my feeling is he's got a super corner case ability, so why not build a super corner case deck all around him? <laughs> and then it's because... Not, it, yeah, so justified logic. <laughs> <laughs> and then because, you know, it is a, a multiplayer deck, I, I fill the rest of the deck space out with either, um, you know, I've got some events in there like, you know, hold your ground to 
ready right any sentinel characters which is not you know if it's in valor otherwise i can ready dory i can ready you know baragon whatever things like that and then i just fill it out with uh, ranged allies uh in the tactics sphere so as i have additional tactics resources available i can get out some ranged allies and help across the board so you know again by no means is it a powerful deck but it's kind of a a fun one to play at least for me and it helps out across the board in its own way yeah so Okay, Ted, what's your reaction to Aaron's jankery, as he calls it? Well, uh, playing some jankery is some fun, janky times, I guess. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll still stand on the ground that all the cards uh, in the card pool are, are, are very usable. And he's certainly more of a co uh, corner case hero, like uh, Aaron said, but it, there's plenty of times where that corner case is, is very useful. And uh, to speak on your point, David, he, he does sort of fit the thematic hole of if you're, if you're building dwarf decks um, and you're like, okay, I want this deck or these two decks or three decks to be all dwarf heroes. Um, prior to a dwarf defender, I'd say the only, the best eligible target is maybe like bomber. I used bomber a lot as a defender because he yeah. had five hit points, oh. two defense. <laughs> Grant, that's right. In, that's right. In Grant's <laughs> wheelhouse there using bomber, right? <laughs> right. Uh, but Dory kind of like, well, now I can actually throw in a dwarf who is a tactics and a sentinel. Like he's built to defend and you, you can't count out his, his two attack also, even though he's already kind of struggling for actions. Um, you know, if you are playing uh, Leadership uh, Dane, for example, you know, his attack gets boosted to three. And that's not anything to sneeze at in case he ends up somehow not defending in your deck, even though that's primarily what he's supposed to do. Um, and there's, yeah, there's a lot of good cards that interact with him. Hold the ground and ring mail, like you guys mentioned. Uh, certainly give him a, a decent place. And what about you, Grant? What do you? What's your reaction to Aaron's jankery? I'm gonna. I'm. I'm Aaron. Just to let you know, I'm probably gonna steal that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that it's a word. Great term. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've heard of jank, but I've never made it a noun. Uh, what is that? Is it a noun? Jankery. I don't know. Anyways, I don't t talk English goodly. Anyways, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you? Sorry, Grant. What do you? What do you think of all the this jank that uh, Aaron's Aaron's talking about? Um, I think there's always a place for some fun jank index. Um, whether or not it's viable long term, who's to say? <laughs> but for a good game and you just want to have a bit of fun, jank's always a good way of going. Now, I've played with both Do Dory and Bomber on the table at the same it, time it, in the same deck. Um, or no, okay, decks. okay. Um, to say that's and a whole it, lot of hit points that you have on one side there. Yeah, um, but it's it's been good fun playing with the cards that I don't usually play with mm -hmm. because of the fact that they're either well, obviously Dory's corner case and Bombard kind of got outclassed very early on when he came into the game. He was then outclassed by what was already there. But it's generally good fun just to try and make decks work with which you don't usually play with like heroes and if that's making them janky or whether or not that's making them um competitively viable there's always some case for getting it done were you gonna say something ted uh yeah well i think he's 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 got a real place for the uh i mean that's certainly a neat uh strategy right is just take it take advantage of his hit points and be like this is his contribution to the game is like getting the crap kicked out of him <laughs> like uh yeah i think it's that's just like a real funny thing like just to just to do with him like uh we're just gonna see how much we can just pile on top of this guy but uh the two well, quests that mine are uh you know anything where you have to you have to uh fight the big dragon type enemies. Um, I'd actually be really curious to throw him in a deck against uh, Fire in the Night because Fire in the Night has that specific clause where only the first player can declare a defender against um, the enemy, Dagnir. Dagnir. And, his and his ability, yeah, like overrides that because you can add Dory's defense to whatever character is being declared as a defender. Mm -hmm. And and he also, um, to to 
to build on that, I mean, you're only, unless you're playing with the new um, fourth to three hunters contract, you know, once you have two, uh, two restricted attachments on it, on a, on a hero, you can't do anything more to it. This gets as another way around that. Um, if you're playing, you know, three or four player, um, the example that I have is like, um, dine, dine, the new dine, um, spirit dine, you know, you can, you can get his attack up to, or his defense up to six, but some of these big, bad enemies, Balrog, Dagnir, you know, all these guys have huge, huge attacks. So, you know, to, you get a couple of, couple of defenses on him and then you add Dory and I think that that defense is actually, it's worth exhausting two dwarves to defend that without taking any damage, right? Is that, I mean, does that make sense, Aaron? Or I mean, are Absolutely. we are we are we helping you here with your Dory case? <laughs> well, the the first iteration of the Dory deck was just again a complete joke deck where I threw all Sentinel cards sure. that I could fit into one deck <laughs> together, and it did not do anything. But it was kind of a funny deck sure and then i was actually meeting up with the con of the rings guys and we were going to play uh battle of lake town at a planning meeting <laughs> and wow. i tweaked the dory deck to bring in Barivor and start adding some ranged and actually we it performed well in that you know again very specific very corner case but between baragond plus dory we were handling smaug no problem right, right? um and now that you mention it dave with the fourth the three hunters contract, that's three citadel plates on Dory. That's seventeen <laughs> hit points. <laughs> right. Right. And then you can even add that defense or whatever up to, you know, like to one of the other heroes when you don't have the opportunity to I don't know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna say that you know, as it go down through the car the stats are not horrible on Dory, you know, like it's it's appropriately costed there's there's plenty of other dwarves that have higher threat costs right you know and it's a tactics icon in for for dwarves that give you you know the the what the veteran x not the veteran what's the one that just got nerfed battle master the battle master right you know like that's a tactics card and a lot of the tactics attachments like the dwarf of Vax and all those you know like you know i mean this is a I th and i think and I think you said it, Aaron, that that response is not um, you're not going to use it every time because you're already starved for trying to ready this guy. Um, but if you're desperate, you know, I'd rather exhaust a hero and give plus two defense somewhere than um, than lose a hero somewhere else on the board. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, it's it's not necessarily a get out of jail card that you're going to pull out every single time you play but it's nice to have if the situation dictates it and the backup is you've at minimum got a sentinel defense you could still use as well so right. again by no means is it the best ability but the stats are good sentinel's always handy the tactics icon uh going along with the dwarf trait it is too bad that dory does not have the warrior trait it's pretty frustrating yeah I was that's gonna what say. i was gonna Go ahead, say, that's my that's my probably my biggest gripe about him is that he's he's only dwarf traded and i feel like the warrior trait would be fitting and add a you know a little extra to him um absolutely and in uh, the current uh, in in one build of this deck uh before i added the long lake trader to it it actually included <laughs> two copies of Mighty Warrior just to put the <laughs> warrior trade on him so I could get Vigilant Guard on him for two more <laughs> And That it, was extreme jankery. Well, I was going to say that it seems like you're spending a lot to boost his hit points, but why don't you spend anything to try to boost his defense? I mean, if you're going to be oh, throwing defense around... Absolutely. It's got Ring Mail. It's got Gondorian Shield. There's... Um, mm -hmm. I'm forgetting what else. There's, there's, I've got something else in there as well that's helping out with defense. I just like the idea of hurting him as much as possible with Song of Mocking, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like soaking up all the archery no matter what. Um, some of that stuff is just kind of fun. But yeah, I mean, right. I take whatever I get, and you know, if I get something I like more coming out as an attachment, then you know that the existing attachments just disappear, and or you long leg trader them away. 
okay, guys, let's let's talk a little bit about this. So let's say that you're not running um, Aaron's uh, janky jankery deck, Dory jankery deck. What what do you put on to Dory to maximize his ability? Uh, well, well, I guess you need a couple. Anything that uh, gives him action action advantage is the number one thing you want. Like you mm-hmm. said, cram earlier, David. Uh, unexpected courage. Um, those are really probably the best two that I can think of. And and hold your ground. We we covered a lot of the uh, a lot of the base ones. Okay, and then do you have anything that you would couple with him, Grant? Um. I'd probably couple in ways of readying, such as unexpected courage, or if you're doing quests where you can make use of um, oh, ever my heart rises, so you can get his questing ability. I mean, it's only one, but it's still something. Right. Uh, um, there, then that helps. Um, What's the what's the leadership event Durin song? Yeah, that's a really good um, that's a really good event to put in a general. Yeah, I and, mean that's really good and, for dwarves in general. Yeah, like, like he's he's inside the dwarf archetype, and that's actually his biggest strength. You know, like you can ready him with Lure Moria. You know, like just <laughs> that's there's there's a way to get another action out of him right there when you're doing the big ready. You know, he can use his ability. And help someone else defend the the biggest attack on the table, and then you ready everyone, and then he's ready to defend again with his sentinel. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's ways to use this guy, and I think that I I don't think he's a solo hero, right? No, definitely not. Yeah, I'd say definitely not. He's uh, two two player viable, certainly, um, and he'll really shine in multiplayer. Yeah. In an earlier version of the build, I did, because I have access to lore with Barivor, I did throw in the Erebor Record Keeper because he does have uh, the readying action, right? That's you can one, exhaust that's him. That's a very important one that we missed, as a matter of fact. Yeah, that's like yeah. a prime dwarf action advantage. Yeah, so if you've got Biffer, right, I think that works with Dory as well. Um, I didn't end up working in the version I'm running because, other than that, the Record Keeper just sat there and. I don't really need him to, you know, I have other ways to ready him in that deck, but yeah, it, it's, it's definitely something. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I guess my biggest surprise was that you were, you were t- talking about just uh boosting his hit points in your deck and not his defense. Yeah. So, I mean, as, as we wrap up the show um, or we, we approach the end of this, uh, you know, I would say that Dory isn't necessarily special, but he can definitely fill a. Um... No, no, no. He's 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 special. He's special in his own way. <laughs> he's very special. <laughs> Wrong kind of special, Ted. Wrong kind of special. But, you know, like I mean, when you, okay, let let me rephrase then. When you think of power dwarf heroes, you think you know leadership dine. You think of mm-hmm. spirit dine. You know, you think of. Um, I don't even know if Gimli is a top tier. Oh, Grant, what do you think? Is Gimli a top top tier dwarf hero tactics? He, def- he definitely was. Whether he, he was still when is, he first came out, yeah. Whether he still is, that's debatable. Um, but he's definitely still in the top, I'd say, top five dwarves. Top five? Well, yeah. who else is in that list? Is Dory in the list of top five dwarf heroes? I mean, there's only, let's see, there's five through six. Well, Biffer is for sure, right? Just because of his flexibility. Yeah. Right. Biffer can go into any deck, though, right? Like, yeah. That's the beauty both of Biffer. Versions of, both versions of Dean. Right. I mean, there's, You've got... there's, um, let's, there's, I think there's 16 dwarf heroes or 15 dwarf heroes. So, you know, where does, Do- does Dory fall in the top third, the middle third, or the bottom third of those heroes? Of those, Dwarf heroes. We're not talking about the hundred or so heroes in the pool. Yeah, if we just combine them down, I'd say he's not in in the in the you know top cut, but he's he's in no. the, he's in the he's in the top middle cut, maybe. You know, <laughs> there you go. Who's worse than <laughs> middle? 
He's in the second or the third quartile of um, War of Heroes. I've tried to make decks with Oin, and he generally I'm not happy with. Yeah, Oin <laughs> and Ori. Yeah, right? he's he's got his place. Um, you know, they all have their they all have their place depending on yeah, the yeah. configuration you want. And if you're going for a a, a big multiplayer dwarf, the you know, if you want a, a big thematic play experience dwarf is that archetype if you're trying to build three yeah. or four decks and you're like i want everything to be dwarves all four decks dwarves you know then those heroes really get to come out uh and play and they they interact with each other pretty well and then yeah. you know among that entire group dory will is you know he's the only sentinel dwarf defender that there is he's the only, only sentinel is dwarf the is he the only sentinel dwarf hero I believe he is. Yeah. So I think if he fits that role thematically, it's where oh. I, I see his, his biggest win. Well, guys, what should we should we ring this guy? Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, definitely, he's he's one of those heroes where I think you you look at him and you're initially like, okay, <laughs> he's a hero. <laughs> like that's what he is. You know, he's a hero mm -hmm. card. That that he has some traits and he has an ability and he is sentinel. And he's one of the cards, I think, that which when you put him on the table and play with them, that will just kind of, you know, then give you a little new, uh, a new shake on him. He gives you, a, he, he kind of greases the wheels, but isn't the star of the show. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to give him, give him a shot. Okay. Well, Aaron, I don't know if you know or not, but uh, we spend, well, the way we wrap up the show is we... Uh, we rate these cards on a scale from one to ten, where one is the one card to rule them all, and ten is the card that we throw back into the fiery chasm from whence it was made. <laughs> and since you are the guest on the show, and there's four of us, you get to choose whether you want to go first, second, third, or fourth in terms of your ring rating. I would like to go third, please. Third. Okay. <laughs> Who's going to go first? I'll do it. Good job, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I need to uh, before I face um, feedback, uh, I'll have to carefully consider how I've weighted, how I've uh, rated other cards before I, uh, <laughs> before I rate Dory. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, he, he's he's definitely got his uses, and it's the the problem with him is that when you when you compare him to other you know you, you look at the things he's good at like okay he's a sentinel tactics defender the first thing you do is immediately compare him to other sentinel tactics defenders and there's always of course baragond you know since cycle three and now we've added grimbjorn so he, he sort of gotten more competition when he was already kind of fighting for that spot anyway um but there's far uh, you know, more corner case cards, I guess, <laughs> in the card pool, uh, than than Dory. So I, I I'm gonna put him at a a seven. Seven, seven rings from Ted. Yeah, okay. unless of course he's. I mean, I think he's wearing what type of army uh, armor is he wearing? He's just wearing unless like leather. He's like a leather cloak and some stuff. So let's look at his art again. He's got cool art too. You know, he does have so he, cool art. Yeah. he gets uh. He gets points for that. Right. Yeah, I think he's got little like rings around his beard thing too. That's how he's He does. So. He's dressed for battle, but yet he's not a warrior. Very he's not a warrior. Right. Oh, and the question is, is he taking his helmet off or is he putting it on? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> he's like, I'm not really gonna do anything. I'm gonna take this helmet off now. Oh, or is he like geez. ah maybe maybe I'll go into battle? Maybe maybe he's gonna uh, toss the maybe he's gonna toss the helmet to somebody else, and that's how he gives his defense to the to the ooh, other. Ooh, that's <laughs> thematic. And right. He sits oh, down. Is that a and, uh, did I just be murder it uh, to use a sheet. absolutely <laughs> right to use a uh, cardboard of the rings term? Uh, yeah. Grant, what do you think? I like Dory, but he's <laughs> not as he's flexible in what he can do. But he, I, he doesn't make it into all of me decks. No, so no. I'm, so I'm going to give him a five rings. Five. Wow. Okay. Aaron, you're third there, buddy. 
Well, I have no history on this show to uh, compare any ratings to, so I can I can play fast and loose with my numbers. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and this is such a scientific, it's a highly arbitrary yet scientific system. Mm. So just, yeah. you know. He's number one in my heart, but right. in reality, I would say, you know, his, his, his flavor text is that he really is a decent fellow. And I would say that he is a decent hero, and I'd go with a five myself. Oh, okay. Um, and that leaves me. And so I think that, um, I think having a third tactics dwarf is pretty good until Thorn comes out, um, soon enough. Um, I think the dwarf trait is good on, <laughs> well, he is a dwarf, so he better have the dwarf trait, even though he's missing the warrior trait right now. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I think he's a, just a, a good, um, a good, good multiplayer hero you know you need a uh, another another tactics dwarf or another dwarf to put into a deck you're playing three or four player i think this is it and so i don't think he's solo so that's why i'm never going to probably put him on the table much um but because of your event because of con of the rings i now understand a lot more of multiplayer dynamics um so i think i'm going to have to um, stick with Ted here and give him a seven, seven rings. So, and even though I do have the history of the show behind me, so somebody's going <laughs> to comment that I, you know, how can you give him seven rings? You know, you thought Gandalf was an eight <laughs> or something <laughs> stupid like that. Uh, but, uh, that's fine. So, well, yeah. Aaron, it has been amazing to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, anytime you want to come back, um, you're more than welcome to come back. If you come out with another deck that's uh, full of jankery, or even if you want to come back and revisit Dory, you're you're always welcome. See you again and when we talk about more cards from the show. No, when we talk about more cards from the game on the show. Have a great day. And if you're interested in finding this or any of our back episodes of Card Talk, Feel free to search YouTube where you can find our flagship video episodes with the username CardTalk2018. Or you can search the RSS feed CardTalk2018.libsyn.org for our extended audio versions of our podcast. Or you can find us on Facebook at CardTalk2018. And if you have any questions for Grant or myself or for both of us, feel free to email us at CardTalk2018 at gmail.com.